Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and start here with the toughest one I have. So, could you state your name for us, please? <laughs> Margaret Hendike. All right. And your current occupation? I farm and I am the current city and county supervisor. All right. And give us a little bit of information about your education. I, uh, I went to Pell High School, completed through 12th grade. I did, I did attend some central college, and then I went back to farming and um, um, working. Okay. Um, if you can, share a little bit about your family and family life and things like that. Yeah, I've asked, I've asked that to stay out of the politics. Okay. <laughs> I, I am married. My wife and I have adopted children. We have, uh, so. Well, you're married with children. Yes. So. All right. <laughs> and uh, let's see. You've been a part, or how long have you been a part of Mahaska County? I've, I've, I was born here, and I've grown up here. I'm 53 years. All right. Well, um, what made you want to seek politi political office in the first place? I, I, just, I was just frustrated with the transparency in our government. Um, how do you plan to involve residents of Masca County in the decision-making process? It, it is a challenge. We've tried numerous and over times, I think, to talk more about more stuff openly at the board meetings. And I'm, you know, I'm finding out it's people do not watch the board meetings. And so, you know, they, it's hard to catch bits and segments of it. And so it is, it is, uh, it is an issue to try and keep everybody informed. And I find out it, it's probably a good idea just to talk about things. If you don't have to make a decision on it right away, just let it sit and see if anybody comes about to you in the next month or so and see if there is issues, if people want to talk about it, and then make a decision. Okay. Um, and then as a county supervisor, there's some question as to who a supervisor represents. So could you help define for, for voters who a county supervisor represents? County supervisor plays many different roles. We, uh, we do not have any authority inside corporate limits dealing with the city responsibilities, but the city's public safety responsibilities, street responsibilities. Basically, it comes down to we do not have any responsibility inside city limits for the city's legislative or police powers. That is their responsibility. We take care of the sheriff uh, and his police powers. We take care of the legislative authority dealing with secondary roads, um, eminent domain authority dealing with the unincorporated areas, for various things. We deal with the funding for the county attorney, for the treasurer, for the auditor, the recorder. We sit on a board that's made up of the school board, uh, city mayors, and the, and the, and the counts, uh, supervisors for the assessor. And so um, we've, we've fit on, we sit on a 20 AD with the landfill where we're supposed to be representing unincorporated people. So it's, it's many different roles at different times of what we actually are fulfilling and who we're representing. Okay, so you, you represent, I'm just trying to help clarify, so you represent those that live in the rural county, do you represent those that live within a corporate city limit then as well? When we come to the funding for um, the assessor, meeting the needs, excuse me, not, not the assessor, that's through the, through the board, but through the county attorney, because the county attorney does represent the cities police force when there's a state charge filed. We represent the, uh, the entire county for funding for the auto department and the recorder. We represent the entire county for the auditor, funding the auditor. We represent the entire county funding for the recorder because they, they have to record all the transactions that take place in the county. We do have to take care of some of the township um, rural areas on secondary roads. That has been delegated to the supervisors from the state and so um, just different roles for different uh, entities. Okay. Um, and then, do you have a plan for the uh, ongoing relationship between the county and those incorporated cities? Well, I think, first of all, we need to understand that, that when there's 20 ADs, the 20 AD is the limits of, of those boundaries. And so I think it's hard for everybody to understand, and we're going through that now with the landfill, that the 20 AD is, is the limitations and sets the boundaries of, of the 20 AD authority. And when those are stepped outside the bounds of, it's those, those actions are ultra virus or void, illegal. And so it's hard to, 
It's hard to get everybody on the same page to understand all this stuff. We're trying to redo the bylaws now at the county landfill and, and um, until the uh, insurance company lawyer got involved, it was, they didn't even understand that the bylaws had to conform to within the limits of the 28E. Okay, so just making sure that there's legal understanding between those different entities is, is part of what you're wanting to uh, help bring to the, the situation. I mean, I guess so that the county and the cities cooperate or work together. Correct. Okay. Um, so, of course, we all know medical insurance is not cheap anymore, and, and the county's had to, to look for a way to help, you know, provide for that cost. Um, how do you or look to help make that happen for the county and, and its employees? Well, we're always looking for, for better contracts, uh, better pricing. I know uh, Supervisor Wonder right now sits on the, the health care board, and they're reviewing with the, with the small group ways to curb some of those costs or ways of better purchasing the coverage for the employees, which then relates back down to the taxpayers. So it's a constant battle. Medical costs go up extremely every year, and um, it's a battle. So in that battle, it's budgetary too. I mean, there's that cost to the county or the taxpayers. It goes up and down. How do you, how do you look to work within that constraint of you know property tax and and benefit? Well, fortunately, we've got a lot of great employees at the county county level, and so they understand that uh, as expenses continue to go up, some of that has to be shared at both ends, and so some of those costs are passed on to the employees, some are passed on to the taxpayer, and, and it's give and take, trying to uh, keep it fair. You want to keep good employees, but yet you can't continue to, to uh, break the bank and um, give everything to the taxpayer and or charge everything to the taxpayer and, and give everything to the employee. Because you know, when, when employees know they have some skin in the game, they also take better care of their own health, which then cuts down on the medical costs. So currently, Mahaska County is sharing an engineer with Kickup County. Um, so what is your plan for that position in the future? Well, we do have um, Andrew McGuire. We are sharing with Kickup County. It has become an issue of acquiring county engineers. Uh, I believe the state legislature this spring changed the law from uh, continuous boundaries for sharing an engineer to uh, non-contiguous boundaries. The ledger even acknowledged it's difficult to find a county engineer in today's times. Uh, I think the state DOT, I haven't asked recently, but four months ago was short like 300 engineers themselves. So we're competing with the state and also other counties. We, um, we have the position open. We have, we have uh, interviewed a candidate or two for the full-time position. We just did not think there was a good fit for our county. Uh, currently, we do have an individual that is trying to finish his uh, engineering exams, and so he is working as an interim in our county under Andrew for the supervision that is required for those engineering exams. And so, you know, in two, three, four years, if um, he's the right fit, it's a possibility. Okay. Um, and we've touched on the engineer part, but you know, the, the county road system is uh, always a big topic, and and uh, there's some works in the project. Let's kind of get uh, your thought about the county road system in, in general. The county road system is made up of different uh, segments. First, you have your farm to market, which is the collector roads, and then you have um, maybe some other hard service roads, and then the gravel roads. And so, we are working on maintaining those hard service roads finding the funding for those. Um, we're, we're, we've changed some policies in the county this year, and Andrew has worked on it with the uh, secondary road employees. We're trying to get a 6% crown in the gravel road. I mean, that's been really encouraged now. If an individual calls in, a citizen calls in with a complaint or an issue, we've made it a policy now to send someone out to look at it and actually return the call or get in touch with that individual to let them know what um, their thoughts of the issues are, and maybe some time frame when it might be resolved with uh, putting in priority with all the rest of the demands in the, in the county. And so we've also eliminated now putting in driveways, and so that will free up a, a, a whole crew, or maybe even two crews, which is a backhoe and two or three trucks from spring to fall. And now hopefully we'll spend more time 
cleaning out ditches, getting better drainage, getting the water off the road, getting the, the subsurface moisture out of the road bed itself and into a, you know, a deeper ditch to help dry up the bed and keep it um, more firm. So, I mean, all this is going to take time, but we're setting some new policy and trying to get some things in place to where things change and get for the better. Okay. Well, we're, 220th is a farm to market road. Correct. And uh, so, what do you believe should happen with 220th Street? And, and, it, and we all know that uh, there's a planned closure for the regional airport for that. So, I mean, it, but all candidates would have to have an idea of what they want to do with the 220th Street. So, well, we've proposed. Um, to, to reroute on the 235th, but that, that road will take a lot of work to get it built up. I know the cities would like to, to do a service road and, and add more traffic to the four-lane highway. I, I believe the environmental assessment as well as our county engineer and, and um, you know, the city sued us over, over that, so they've hired their experts and um, we were forced to hire another county engineer to review it. And everybody agrees putting putting more slope moving traffic on the four lane highway is not adequate. We've already and even Iowa DOT admits that uh, acknowledges it's it's already accident prone in those areas. So it's an issue that's enough to continue worked out. I, I am not in favor of putting more traffic, especially slow moving traffic, on a four lane highway. I think it's I think it's better rerouting it around if possible, give them the option to stay and and be safe for everyone. And it's not only the individual in the slow moving traffic, it's, it's the individual that's driving to Pella to go to work. It's the individual driving back from Pella from work. They, get, they rear end the heavy equipment. They're the ones most likely to get injured and hurt or dead. So it's for everyone's safety. Okay. Um, and we went through a lot of discussion as a county over a new emergency radio system. And uh, I think, what was it, in 18, it was bid out and... and uh, so I'm just kind of, um, what are your thoughts about this project? You know, where's it, where's it need to get to go forward, and and uh, kind of, you know, just some some general update. Because I was thinking this year it was it November, it was supposed to have been operational, and it so far we're still putting up towers. So yeah, we're not even to that point yet. Unfortunately, we found the tower site in New Sharon, that would still be on County Secondary Road property. Um, the secondary road shop was not adequate. We could not get a tower high enough, and so we found another site around Oskaloosa, and that's been difficult due to um, well, got to be so many f feet away from cemeteries, historical buildings, other various things that requirements of separation, and so we believe we found one. It's just a matter of working through the process of purchasing it, and um, we've, we thought we found a secured site in by Eddyville, and so we're hoping that contract still gets signed, but otherwise. Um, We've got another site that uh, we believe is secured. It's just a matter of switching it and uh, moving it forward. All right. Well, so if a supervisor was found to be not eligible to be a supervisor any longer, um, what would you do to help remedy that situation? I guess to follow the law and see what it says. I have no idea. I mean, I think the code, I have to give you more detail. I think the code says if you live in the county and are, are voting eligible, you're you're eligible or qualified to run for supervisor. Yeah, and I'm referencing an earlier, a couple of years ago, a, a situation that put everybody in a in a situation, I guess. So, just didn't know how p folks would handle that for if that came about while they're serving. Um, you know, that being said, we talked about supervisors. I, I think um, the last six weeks we've had a rough go at, at the county. Um, family, you know, with the, with the passing of uh, Deputy Rainey, and now passing of um, Supervisor Parker, and so I do I do want to extend my uh, sympathies out to the families f for those families. It's um, it's been difficult and um, a surprise to everyone. Yeah. Um, so if I could get your, your thoughts on the three-member board that we currently have and maybe moving to a five-member board and, and even it, on a part-time basis with a county manager, do you have any thoughts on, on looking at the way county governments run that way? You know, I think it's still a choice. It's just a matter of finding people that want to run. Some years we've got three and four people that want to run. The next year you have a hard time finding anybody that wants to do it, period. And then next thing, if you go to five-member board, is it going to be all at large? Are you going to do districts? So 
you know, I think there'd have to be a lot of conversation to see if we want to change it. I think most counties are at three. I know some larger counties are still at three. So, you know, there's pros and cons to both sides. Yeah. Okay. Um, and of course you're running with a specific party um, and county supervisors are partisan. Do you think that that should change and not have a partisan uh, board? No, I think I think if you're to run for office, I, I, I see no issue with uh, declaring which party you're you're running on. Um, and then, what's your overall vision for the county if you were to win the election? I think first thing we need to do is get some of these issues straightened out, and so we understand what 20 of these are for, and how they're made, and the purpose. Um, we're, we're working on um, communication now with with the. I really like this. Tom Tom Flaherty has really worked well trying to communicate with the businesses in our entire county to understand their needs. As you know, we're working on the Southeast Connector. Um, the supervisor started meeting with those businesses this week, and they are really thrilled that they had a chance and a voice to have a say what would what, what take care of their needs. I think they've been disappointed so far that no one's spoken to them about any of this stuff, and I think they're thrilled to death that they finally have an ear um, to talk to to express their hopes to, and really talk about how much their, their plans are of expansion, not only in road system, but maybe even the rail. And so there's a lot of issues that need that can be worked through, and I think um, that's, that's what's enjoyable, hearing, hearing where they're at and where they plan to go and what their needs are. And this is my last question for you, so, uh, and then I'll leave poor Mark alone. So. <laughs> What differentiates you from supervisors in the past? What makes you unique? You know, I've tried to be honest with the people about where my thoughts are. I've tried to study the law, uh, what, this, what the county's um, limitations are. The Board of Supervisors or the county is a created entity by the legislature. Um, we, we don't, we're not the kings of the county. We're just, we're just a created entity where we have to follow the same laws that every other county has to follow by the legislature. And so it is, it is imperative and very important that I think before you make decisions, you understand that you either have the authority or you don't have the authority to move in that direction and then move accordingly before you get into trouble. And so I think it's, um, I've enjoyed really studying what authority the Board of Supervisors really have, what you can delegate away and what you cannot, and just uh, try to make the right decisions from there. Well, that's the end of my official questions, so I would leave this spot open for you if there's any comment that you would like to make to the, to the voters yourself. Uh, no, I appreciate being willing to serve for the last four years. Um, there's a lot of things up in the air right now. I'd like to see them through, and um, it's been a joy um, serving them. It's been a joy meeting a lot of the, the business owners and meeting what their needs are and see if we can meet those. And um, that's going to be an ongoing issue. That won't be solved overnight, but it's possible. And um, I think I think working together with the industry to really see what their needs are. You know, it's the people. Individuals have the same desires. It's just money is a limiting factor on all things. And so you've got to somewhat meet the needs with the, with the funding that's available. Uh, you know, the county's not Santa Claus, but we do need to provide um, some basic needs. All right. Well, that's the end of what I have. So appreciate your time. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.